Hi, I'm Phil at the Soundproofing Store, and today we're talking about coloured noise absorbing glue. I'll be giving you our professional opinion on this type of product, its pros and cons, and giving you a little inside industry knowledge. First thing I need to say is that I'm avoiding using a specific brand name in this video. But if you're watching this, you probably know what I'm referring to. So for the duration of the video, I'll be referring to this product as Acoustic Glue. To give some background, this is a product that is very popular over in the States, but it is slowly becoming more recognized here in the UK, mostly from people seeing it online and particularly from very well marketed YouTube videos. So what is the product and what does it actually do? Well, it's not really a glue. It's what they call a dampening compound. It never fully sets hard, so you don't use it to glue materials together. In fact, it's actually recommended that you still use mechanical fixings as well as the glue to actually fix the materials in place. The idea behind it is that over in the States, a lot of houses are timber-based constructions or what we generally refer to in the UK as stud walls. And these constructions are very lightweight with very little mass. So the idea of the acoustic glue is that you apply the glue onto the existing plasterboard or drywall, as our American friends call it, and then apply another layer of plasterboard over the top, sandwiching the acoustic glue in between. Now, as I mentioned, the glue never fully sets hard. It remains flexible. So by separating the two sheets of board with a flexible material in between, it creates a vibration dampening effect. And as sound is a vibration energy, by dampening that energy, the sound reduction should be improved. So the question is, does the product work? Well, to a degree, yes, it does it does increase the wall's ability to dampen sound energy. However, there are a couple of issues. Firstly, it's only a small level of dampening. So just as with all soundproofing materials to a degree, this on its own is only going to make a very small amount of difference. You have to look at soundproofing as a full system. For example, the majority of the improvement gained by adding the glue and an extra sheet of plasterboard over the top will have actually come from the extra sheet of plasterboard increasing the mass of the low mass wall. So there are certainly other materials that can be used within a system that will give a greater improvement. Because it's only a small amount of dampening, it's only effective at higher frequencies. For example, higher pitched female voices, for example. If your issue is bassy music or low rumbly male voices or even things like impact vibration, this on its own is really not going to be very effective. Secondly, it's only really going to be useful on low mass structures such as stud walls. Adding some acoustic glue and a sheet of plasterboard to a solid brick or concrete party wall like we have in the UK is not gonna make anywhere near enough difference to give you a noticeable improvement. And because our walls are constructed with much more mass to start with, we need to go a lot further to gain significant improvement. And finally, it's certainly not a cheap material for its relatively small amount of benefit. And for this reason, it's not something that we use here at the soundproofing store, as there are other materials that aren't necessarily cheaper, but have much more benefit to justify the cost. So what alternatives do we use? Well, in terms of a material that we use to sandwich between acoustic plasterboards to upgrade the performance, we use a material called Tech Sound. Now, just like the acoustic glue, this is viscoelastic. So when placed between two sheets of board, it gives the wall the ability to dampen sound, energy, and vibration. However, Unlike the acoustic glue, it also creates a barrier of mass, and it's mass that predominantly blocks airborne sound. So Tech Sound is adding an extra 10 kilograms of mass 
per meter square, whereas the acoustic glue is adding no extra mass. And because it doesn't uniformly cover the entire wall, it doesn't create any kind of airtight or sealed barrier at all. In terms of upgrading lightweight stud walls, we have a product called the ProSound Soundboard 4. Now, this is a layer of acoustic grade plasterboard, but it's laminated to two layers of mass loaded vinyl, which again greatly increases the mass. And it's also got a thick layer of acoustic foam. This is a closed cell foam, and that's there for the vibration dampening. Now this easily outperforms acoustic glue and a sheet of plasterboard and is much easier and quicker to install. Finally, for domestic customers experiencing unwanted airborne or impact noises, such as loud music, bassy frequencies, snoring, banging doors and cupboards, or things like music rooms and home cinemas where high levels of dampening are needed, we use our Reducto clip system. And this again far outperforms glue and a plasterboard in both volume reduction and the range of frequencies that are improved, making it far more appropriate for these high decibel kind of applications. So to close, acoustic glue used in the right situations on the right construction types can give some sound reduction improvement but it's not the miracle cure that the marketing seems to suggest. There are materials and systems that will give you a much better result. And for this reason, it's not a product that we recommend or supply here at the Soundproofing Store. I hope this has been helpful. Please like and subscribe for more informative videos on acoustics and soundproofing. And of course, if you need any help or advice for your own soundproofing project, whether it's walls, ceilings, or floors, please don't hesitate to pick up the phone, give us a call, we're here to help.